As Oklahoma gets closer to the 2019 tornado season, you can expect the predictions of what this year may bring to start piling up. But how accurate will any of those be? We sat down with National Weather Service Tulsa meteorologist in charge Steve Piltz to find out what can be found from studying past seasons and what, if anything, can be predicted for our upcoming season. Here's a look at the last 70 years, what is known as the era of modern tornado reporting. Eight F5 or EF5s have hit statewide since the modern era of reporting began, three of which have occurred in NWS Tulsa territory. Most F5s or EF5s have occurred in NWS Norman territory, like the notorious Moore tornado, an EF5 that hit McLean and Cleveland counties in 2013, killing 24 people or the F5 that hit Grady, McLean, Cleveland, and Oklahoma counties during an unprecedented outbreak in May 1999, which claimed the lives of 36 people. Tulsa's coverage area has not seen an F5 since one hit Choctaw and McCurtain counties in 1982. It was the only F5 tornado to hit Oklahoma that whole decade. F5 tornadoes, of course, have hit Oklahoma before the modern reporting era began, like the Woodward tornado in 1947 that claimed the lives of 116 Oklahomans. It was because of that tornado and others around the same time that the National Weather Service began their tornado watch and warning program in 1953. It is the responsibility of the United States Weather Bureau to provide the public with information regarding the possibility of severe local storms, including tornadoes. Such advance notice can save many lives and even help reduce property damage. In total, five FEF5s were recorded in Oklahoma before the modern era of recording began, bringing the statewide total of recording FEF5s to 13. As you can see by this graph, the number of overall tornadoes appears to increase here in NWS Tulsa's county warning area, which covers 25 out of Oklahoma's 77 counties, plus seven of Arkansas's. The data is organized into decades. In our neck of the woods, we can see there have been a steady amount of F0 and F1 tornadoes every 10 years up until the 1990s, several every year. Those are the smaller ones that don't cause as much damage. On the other end of the scale, the number of F4 tornadoes appears to be between 3 and 5 per decade, until the 2000s when it dropped to 1 during that 10-year period. From then on, you see the number of tornadoes spike dramatically, with the number of F0s quadrupling in the 1990s and staying high in the 2000s. A record number of EF1s and tornadoes in general in the 2010s must mean tornadoes are increasing every year, right? Not exactly. You see all of a sudden there's a big change in the numbers in the 90s, 2000s, and 2010s. That's when you put more staff in the Tulsa Weather Office. And so now there's more people available to go look at things, and you're also putting staff in the office that was trained to do that kind of stuff. Pilt said, Oklahoma records are not a consistent reporting system to try and pull trends from, given how rapidly scientific research has progressed over the years. Everything from how data is collected to the invention of social media has had an impact on the quality and frequency of tornado reporting and recording. We know more about how tornadoes tear up homes, and so we can look at that and say, yeah, that, that, that home is tore up and it's, it's really bad, but it failed because its garage door failed. Because the garage door failed, the air got into the garage, the weakest thing was up through the roof, the roof came off. Once the roof came off, then the rest of the house started to suffer. And you just be had, began to have this, this cascading effect of damage that we know now can suggest that wasn't as strong as the tornado as we thought. But say 50 years ago, we just said, oh my gosh, that was a, that was a much stronger tornado. Meanwhile, Oklahoma engineers have had decades of their own advancements, building structures to better withstand the force of tornadoes. A house that was hit by a tornado in 1965 may have looked obliterated, you might have rated it F4 or F5 because that house is just gone. Now the same, same basic structure of same kind of house from the same you know, economic background gets hit by a tornado, it stands up a little better. And so now we don't rate it. Maybe the tornadoes were exactly the same strength, but because of how they tore things up or different now, we'll get them a different rating. Flash forward to 2018, when Oklahoma saw the quietest start to a tornado season on record. Could that be the new trend? 
The only thing this data can confirm is nothing stays quiet for long. What, four years in a row that were really very quiet tornado-wise, and all of a sudden you're back at the peak for several years, and then you've got three or four years in a row that are quiet, and you're back at a longer peak that, that ran for a while. So I think it, it would be dangerous to say that, that, well, it's been quiet for several years, therefore we're done. Pilt said while 70 years of modern data and the smattering of data before that may seem like a lot, it's really not a large pool to pull from, especially when the numbers are all over the place. To basically say that, that we know all we think we need to know about tornadoes from, from 1950 forward is probably not wise. Um, they're, they're long trends and that's, that's, that's good, but I mean, we know in the broader scheme of the world, much longer history exists there, and we'd have no real clue what happened in this neck of the woods prior to, I don't know, what, 1850 or thereabouts? Even, even just records of the initial folks in here um, are pretty spotty. So what good is all this data anyway? For one thing, meteorologists have learned a great deal about how storms form and what kinds of storms produce tornadoes. That helps them better protect the public. Storm systems are tied to the oceans. The oceans and the atmosphere are tied together. Both are always changing, especially before they make it here to landlocked Oklahoma. We're far enough away from the Atlantic and the Pacific that the connections aren't nearly as solid as you might think. So, you know, for California, South Texas, across Florida, you can say things like, hey, this season really ought to lean a certain way because when we see those ocean connections start to happen, it's probably really going to feed back into the atmosphere over those areas. When we see it start to happen, and then we're looking at it up here, it's like, yeah, there's going to be some storminess around, but it may be over south Oklahoma, north Texas. It may not be as far north as Tulsa. Weather officials continually deal with forecasts that are accurate one day and then completely different the next based on those oceanic and atmospheric changes. Radar might be able to indicate when storms are forming weeks in advance, but where they will end up is pure guesswork. And what kind of radar is available and where makes things that much trickier? Out in the oceans, measurements are taken via satellite. Down in Mexico, they have less measurement equipment. Sometimes meteorologists in Tulsa don't get good data to make predictions until the storm is just 12 hours away. Now, in the five to 10 day period, we might look at it and say, there's gonna be tornadoes in the plains. That could be Nebraska, that could be Central Texas, could be Oklahoma. So I think, you know, somewhere, you know, at a 10 day period, you could say, yeah, we need to watch out. This is going, this system is going to tear something up between Omaha and, and San Antonio. And, and, and then you let their prediction refine after that. As for confident predictions for Tulsa, Pilt said due to the ever-changing elements, the only predictions you can really trust confidently are the ones that are made no more than five days out. Another thing to keep in mind is perspective. Meteorologists, emergency responders, and the general public all have a different perspective as to what qualifies as an accurate forecast. If it's the public, if it's not within you know, 15, 20 miles of them, they may not think that they ever really had a bad storm, but the emergency manager's gonna know, like, man, that was a close call, and that was, if it's 50 miles away, they might be going, Phew, I'm glad that thing missed us, because that would've tore our town up. So everybody has their own personal zone where they where they're going to score was that forecast a hit or not in the end there's still a lot we don't know and i think that's that's where a lot of this comes down to it really still only takes one storm system to come across the area at the right time to suddenly produce quite a few tornadoes and then you know when people ask like is it going to be a bad tornado season and the only real answer to that is if there's one in your backyard it was a bad season